girl and her boyfriend, looking for a little privacy, decide to park their car in the woods. As they spend their Valentine's evening listening to the car radio and away from the watchful eyes of everyone, the two of them enjoy the privacy of the local Lover's Lane when they hear a news bulletin on the radio about an escape from the insane asylum the next town over. The radio announcer gives the details that the lunatic has a hook for a hand and to be on the lookout. The girl asks her boyfriend to start the car and go someplace less desolate. When the boy tries to start the engine, it won't turn over. He gets out and checks it and thinks it might be the coil wire or the battery. He tells his girlfriend not to worry. The gas station is just a mile down the road. He'll go and get a tow truck and be back in no time. The girl reluctantly agrees and sits quietly, waiting. Soon, she drifts off to sleep. About an hour later, she suddenly awakes to the sound of scraping on the hood of the car. She looks around, but it's so dark she can't see much of anything. The noise continues. She rolls down the window and she looks up, only to see her boyfriend hanging from the tree above the car and his fingernails scraping the hood. In a panic, she tries to start the engine and it turns over. She jams the car into gear and drives away, driving recklessly until she gets pulled over by the police. As the officer approaches the car, she runs to him, terrified, explaining her boyfriend is dead back in the woods. Concerned, the officer puts her into his car and then suddenly realizes she's left the other car running. He goes to shut the engine off and can see on the rear driver's door a bloody hook caught in the handle. This is a very popular old urban legend told in many different variations. But it's one that some believe is based on a true story. But then again, isn't that how all urban legends begin? When it comes to urban legends, there is always someone who says, no, it really happened. It happened to a girl or a guy at my school or hometown. In actuality, I doubt that any of the urban legends are really true. But the one that I just told to you is said to be based on some murders that happened in Texarkana. In the 1940s, a killer dubbed the Phantom, a man who wore a white pillowcase over his head with two slits cut out for eyes, attacked and killed teenagers parked in a well-known lover's lane spot in a wooded area just off Richmond Road. From February 22, 1946 until May 3rd, the Phantom would claim eight victims, wounding three and killing five. The urban legend takes its origin from the first attack of Jimmy Hollis and Mary Jean LeRae. Like the two in the story, the teenagers were listening to the radio. When the Phantom snuck up with a bright flashlight blinding the couple, Hollis shouted to the Phantom he had the wrong car. But both were ordered out of the car and Hollis was knocked out, and the killer told LeRae to run. Then he chased her down and assaulted her. Incredibly, both survived. Now this is an interesting side note that 22 years later, the Zodiac Killer would do virtually the same thing to Betty Lou Jensen and David Faraday on Lake Herman Road. The difference was, neither of them survived. The Phantom of Texarkana, also known as the Moonlight Murders, has striking parallels to the Zodiac Killer in San Francisco, who would eventually attack seven and kill five. Only in one instance did the Zodiac attack a single person, cab driver Paul Stein in October of 1969. Lover's Lanes were popular with teens from the 1940s to the 1960s. In what was considered a more innocent time, but provided the perfect hunting grounds for monsters like the Phantom and the Zodiac. The only conclusion one can come to with the deviation in the Paul Stein attack was the other couples were in secluded places, such as lover's lanes, and away from the public. Paul Stein, being a cab driver, could be ordered to drive anywhere without question or fear of being attacked. Is it possible the Phantom and the Zodiac were the same person? The circumstances were certainly quite similar. Or was the Zodiac inspired by the Phantom? Most likely, the latter is more true. As on the Lake Berryessa attack of Cecilia Shepard and Brian Hartnell, he wore a medieval-style executioner's costume. 
with the zodiac symbol emblazoned across his chest. In both cases, neither the zodiac nor the phantom were ever caught. And it is highly possible both could still be alive. After all, everyone thought the BTK killer was gone too after 25 years when he resurfaced. But that's a story for another time. So the next time you consider going for a drive to that nice secluded spot, just remember, every urban legend starts somewhere. (laughs) 